You're listening to Short Inspirations from Ralph. You are free to, part one. In Genesis 2, right at the beginning, the Lord God was talking to the man in the garden and commanded him and said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For When you eat from it, you will certainly die. Right in the middle of this statement from God is this phrase, you are free to. So we see in the solar plexus of the creation of man was this astonishing gift to choose. Someone said, freedom to choose is more to be treasured than any possession on earth can give. God made us as voluntary participants in his world. He made us free moral agents, and if this were not the case, our planet would not contain human beings, just robots. And when you pick apart the relationship between God and Adam and Eve right at the start, you see this appear everywhere, this freedom to choose. You shall have dominion over, you shall name all the animals, you shall multiply, you shall leave and cleave. You are free to all voluntary responses. Even with commands that he gave them, they were still free to follow those commands or not. And this freedom to choose, to make our own decisions, permeates all of life. And I often talk to married couples who can be tempted to cross the line and try and control each other. We can't even do that in a marriage relationship. We leave each other with freedom to choose. And we bring up our children to one day become adults that can make great choices. And in giving us this gift, God himself took a massive risk because man may choose to leave him. And they did. And so here's the principle. When we choose to walk away from God, then we walk into bondage. When we walk away from the tree of life, we are walking into pain and suffering and death. And our freedom to choose becomes more and more restricted. And so in the spirit of the age in which we live, we see not only a leading away from God, but a leading into spiritual slavery and bondage. And extreme examples of that in recent decades have been the godless restricted countries where you cannot speak freely. There is no you are free to. And this is not only because the countries have forsaken God, but have actually become God themselves. They try and fill the shoes of God and they make a huge mess of it. They are corrupt people trying to control the masses. And as Bob Dylan sang, you have lawbreakers making the rules. You must do and think and say what you're told to. And usually it ends up in almost the worship of the leader or the emperor, as in ancient Rome. And so God is replaced by false idols. That's the biblical term for it. And when a person or a nation or a church even strays, or a cult is formed, even in God's name, freedoms are taken away. But here's the rub. When we come back to God, we also come back into true freedom. Paul said to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, here it is, there is freedom. But in our world, our current age in which we live, There is tremendous pressure to only say or think what we are told to say or think. And I find it quite ironical that the call or the mission of the Christian or Christ follower are to speak and preach. The Bible says this gospel must be preached. And there's things like prophecy and teaching, speaking in other languages in God's name, bringing out the word of our testimony to the very ends of the earth we are called to do this which is the opposite to what is going on which is to silence and mute the speaker and to scoff or ridicule and persecute 
when someone doesn't keep quiet. To speak freely is not only now under threat, but is being pushed and even legislated by Western governments under the guise of tolerance, love, and this word inclusion. And as our world gets further and further away from our Creator, the more it's heading towards being closed down. But you are free to. In Christ there is freedom. It is for freedom that he has set us free, the scripture says. God bless you.